Masks, photographic, not facial, are still useful whether shooting to silicone or film. For this image of Santa Claus reading a bedtime story to a couple of sleepless kids cozied up in front of a big roaring fire on a chilly Christmas Eve, I wanted the viewer to feel like they'd just stepped into a magical, glowing, firelit room. Since the fire is behind the subjects, it was a perfect opportunity to capitalize on the dramatic look of backlighting. I figured that to make this work effectively, I'd need to light the scene from the fireplace without my lights being in the photo. So why artificially light the scene instead of using the fire itself as a backlight source? Well, to create a heavy backlit look, as you see here, would require a longish exposure to collect enough light for the fire. High ISO was not an option due to quality concerns, plus I was capturing the image on sheet film with a large format view camera. For this format, there is no quality high-speed film choices available. This image was created on film, and for those of you that aren't interested in film, bear in mind that this is a tutorial on lighting and masking. So before you freak out and click off this video, know that I'll also be covering how to do the same with digital. As you know, long exposures are dangerous with animated objects like people especially children, where you run the risk of your subjects appearing blurry due to their inability to sit dead still. In addition to this, the fire would photograph almost completely burned out and there would be lots of lens flare. This is typical when the actual light source is included in the photograph. What I wanted was strong backlighting that looks like it comes from the flames and to marry this with a nice exposure for the fire not a flaring nuclear glow. To freeze the subject sharp and crisp and to have the perfect fire exposure, it was apparent that two exposures would be needed. One for the backlighting the subjects with the strobe flash and one for the fireplace flames. To this end, a composite would be necessary. And since I was shooting film on a 4x5 inch view camera, I decided to do it in camera or more accurately outside in front of the camera. To fake the firelight backlighting, I placed two off-camera flashes inside the fireplace and pointed them outwards towards the subjects. To block the strobes from showing up in the image and causing lens flare, I decided to use an exterior mask rather than an in-camera mask. An in-camera mask, or internal mask it's also called, is a piece of material, usually rigid black paper, that is cut to just the right dimensions, then suspended inside the bellows of the view camera at just the right spot so as to block or mask out, in this case, the fireplace. I need to shoot wide angle to capture the whole scene as you see it. When you focus your view camera, you do so by moving the back of the camera's film standard back and forth, that is, closer and further away from the front of the camera's lens standard. And you do this until you find the perfect distance between the two standards for that sweet spot of sharpness. The two standards or frames are connected with a light tight bellows which expands or contracts like an accordion. When you use longer focal length lenses, the distance between the bellows extension between the two standards is greater than with wider focal lengths. The short bellows extension that is common with wide angle, except in extreme close-ups, makes for very tight quarters inside the camera, rendering internal masking awkward. In cases like this, it's better to use an external mask. An external mask is the same concept as the internal mask, however, it is suspended outside the camera in front of the lens. This second method makes sense since the mask would have to be put into position for the first exposure, then removed for the second. Masking outside the camera is less complicated, making it possible to work faster and making it easier to keep double exposures in register since you don't have to touch the camera when uninstalling and reinstalling the mask. Also, 
It's the only type of masking you can do if you're capturing digitally with a mirrorless or digital SLR camera. There were two ways of doing the required double exposure for this Christmas image. One is load the film holder into the camera, shoot the first exposure with subjects, lighting, and the mask in place. Then remove the mask and the flashes, turn off the accent lighting strobes, ignite some crumpled newspaper behind the fire logs, then expose the film again for just the fire. To expose the next sheet of film, you need to clear out the fire, put the flashes and the mask back in place, then turn on the strobes. As you can imagine, this is a very time consuming, about 15 minutes per shot, and is very trying on the patience of talent, especially if you're photographing children. The second method is to shoot the double exposure out of sequence. Start by exposing all the sheets of film with the subjects, lighting, and mask in place. Once all the first half of these double exposures are complete on each of the sheets of film, remove the mask, clear away the subjects and flashes, turn off the accent lighting strobes, and then create a roaring fire with some crumpled paper behind the fire logs. At this point, the humans can leave the building. They are done. With the talent gone, complete the double exposure by reloading and exposing each film for the fire. This method of splitting up the double exposures is much faster and has a better flow for working with the subjects. However, it is a little less than optimum in terms of registration. The camera will most likely move a little every time you reload the film holders. With the first method, you only need to load each film once, so no need to touch the camera between exposure one and two, other than recocking the shutter. With the second method, the second exposure will be out of register, but only a little if you are gentle, probably no more than a few pixels. This small variance doesn't really matter since the second exposure is just the fire against the black. There are no lines or ghosting for our eyes to identify that the two exposures are not in perfect register. If you're using this masking technique with mirrorless or digital SLR cameras, you'll have to use the second method just discussed since most of these cameras can't capture two exposures in one file. There is a workaround involving a long exposure, but it may cause some noise issues. It works like this. Set your camera to bulb, darken the room for a long exposure, which needs to be long enough to give you time to prepare the fireplace for the second exposure. It would be prudent to block the front of the lens between exposures with something black, like a black card on a boom arm stand. However, this bulb shutter method is unnecessary since compositing this image is a lot easier done in Photoshop. Start by taking the two shots separately. One file has the strobe flash lighting, with the second having just the fire flames. Open the file of the strobe flash lit subjects in Photoshop, then add the file of the fire as a second layer. To this top layer, add a hide all layer mask so that you can selectively paint in the fire over top of the blank fireplace in the bottom layer. Or, instead of a layer mask, try changing the blend mode of the top layer from normal to lighten mode. This blend mode change will make the top layer's bright blazing fire pixels override the lower layer's dark fireplace pixels. Lighten mode tells Photoshop to compare the top layer pixels to the pixels directly below in the bottom layer and to replace only the pixels below with any pixels from above that are lighter in tone. Since the top layer is mostly black without detail with the exception of the fire, only the fire gets added to the lower image. In the end, whichever way you decide to create this image, whether film or digital, you'll need to mask out the fireplace for the flash in fireplace exposure. Bright light sources when photographed flare just as much with digital as with film. There you have it. That was the Santa shot in broad strokes. 
For the finer details, that is if you're still awake and thrive on geeking out, stay with me. I have a lot of words left in me yet.